This video is going to take a look at Lucid Press and how as a tool it can be used to replace Microsoft Publisher. Um, Lucid Press is a new tool that's just been released. It has an app and it also has a website. Um, it's made by the people who made Lucid Chart, which is a web-based tool that you can use to replace um, inspiration. It's good for mind mapping. Um, what's nice about Lucid Press is some of the tools are very similar to that. But we're going to take a look. Um, we're going to look at how you use Lucid Press, what it can make, and how you can link it up with your Google Drive account to make it even easier to access. Once it's linked up, it is literally the same steps as creating a new board processing document as it is to create a Lucid Press document. If you navigate to the Lucid Press website, all you have to do to sign in is click the sign in button. And at the sign in screen, you're going to ignore the place where it asks you to put in a username and password. And instead, you're going to go down and click the Google icon where it says, or sign in with Google. If you're logged into Google Chrome or you're logged into your email, it will find that login. It will create an account and link it up with Lucid Press. And what pops up is the Lucid Press dashboard. You'll notice it's very similar to the Lucid Chart layout, but it's also very similar to Google Drive. If you look on the left, you have a Create button along with some folders. Um, you're able to create more folders. You'll also see your files over here. And if you click on each folder, you'll see different groups and organizations of files. Now here are two samples I've opened. If I click on one, or over at the right, I will see some basic options including clicking an edit document button to open it up for editing. I can rename it, I can copy it, I can delete it, or I can convert this to a template which can be very handy if you want students to use something you created as a template. It will create it as a read-only document that they would have to make their own copies of in order to make changes to. Um, it also lets you control your sharing permissions here. Much like Google Docs, you can share these files with each other and they can be collaboratively constructed and worked on. Now if you would like to create a new document you click on the create button at the top left and you, give, you get two options new document or new folder. New folder is what you would create to organize your files but new document is what you're going to create to create a new file. If I click on new document I get this huge collection of templates I can choose from. Now before you start scrolling down I want you to look over on the right and you're going to see kind of a table of contents. Um, this particular one is showing us templates for digital publishing. That means we're creating things that are mainly meant to be viewed on a computer or on a phone or on a tablet. And that's kind of seems to be where a lot of businesses are going with advertisements. You're seeing less and less mailers and more things that show up electronically. But if you'd like to see some things that are made for print, you can click for print and it will show you some different tab templates there. Now some of them are similar and you just have to wait for the previews to load but you'll see a number of brochure templates available which was not available in Google Docs and that was one of the big draws of Publisher is you can create one of those and just start populating it with your content. If I scroll down I see there's a lot of different choices that you can use to create something. Newsletters, many different things, invitations. Now it also gives you some categories to search through. You can look for brochures. If I click on that, it gives me their main brochure templates. I can look for flyers and see those. So there's a bunch of different ways you can kind of search through and find what you want to use. Well, I'm going to grab this brochure right here. Listed as brochure 5. I'm going to click it and it's going to open it up. Once Lucid Press loads, you're going to see it starts off by asking you to name your document. So I'm going to say Project 1. Just come up with a generic name and click OK. Much like Google Docs, everything I do, every change I make, is going to be automatically saved. Uh, up here at the top left, I see the name. I click on it. I can change that at any time, just like in Google Docs. Um, very similar to most programs I've used. I have a bunch of different options up here. Um, but you'll see there's a lot of different icon tools over here on the left. Many of them are pretty self-explanatory, including adding text boxes, bringing in YouTube videos, bringing in pictures. Um, bringing stuff from your Drive account. Very easy to get started on. You'll also see that you have this whole brochure kind of filled in and you can just start clicking and changing the, the text and putting in your own content in no time at all. So I can delete this content and add my own and it's going to be formatted to kind of match the theme of this. So that's up to you. 
Now across the top you'll see some basic formatting tools. These are very similar to things you've used in the past. Um, on the right hand side there's some other tools that you can use to kind of uh, make some different changes to your file. The page settings brings up how you want it to look. Do you want it to be, um, you know, what page size? Do you want a portrait? Do you want it landscaped? Um, there's a bunch of different choices you can experiment with. There's a graphic choice. Anytime you select a graphic, you can come in here and change some of the features of it. Sometimes you can change the line surrounding a square or a shape. You can also change the, the look of something, the color of it. You have some basic text formatting tools here where you can uh, have use these sliders to kind of create um, different borders and where the text is going to be when you use it. You can also choose to allow certain things to happen, all caps, small caps, things like that. The wrap tool helps you format different things when you're going to insert it into your um, your page. You have the uh, paragraph tool. This gives you some different styles. You can choose to have different things automatically formatted so when you add certain things it's going to kind of stick to these rules. You have your inline styles which I'm not 100% sure on how to use yet so we're going to kind of skip over that. Um, one of the ones I found useful is the metrics. This allows you to kind of manually control the size of different objects. You can use the, the little sliders to adjust them where they're going to be. Um, you can also use this to change orientation to flip things. So it's very handy if you want to do some different um, customized things with graphics or things you bring into it. And then the layers. This allows you to work in layers if you want to have certain things overlapping or on top of each other. You can use this to create layers and uh, to be a little bit more in-depth in your design. One of the features that makes Lucid Press very cool is it also shares just like it does in Google Docs. You can come up here to the top right and click share and you get a very similar um, sharing window as you do in your other tools. Very easy if you click publish you can choose to publish in different ways and what it will do is it will kind of make a, a web version gives you a link that you can now um, use. This just makes it public on the web. If I unpublish it, it takes it off the web. I can still work on it in either way. It gives me a choice to embed so I can get some embed code or publish the link. Um, but it's very easy to share, very easy to use. Even lets you share on Google+, Twitter, and Facebook if you wanted to. But this is kind of a quick at a glance look at Lucid Press. I think you're going to find out a lot more by actually playing with it and having your students start using it. But it, it is a very viable replacement for Publisher. Plus, it's free. It's a part of our Google Apps. And you can use it on any, any computer, any Chromebook, or any computer at home or in school. So the next video, we'll be taking a look at how you can link this up with your Google Drive account to make it easy to access.